All right, so uh, welcome everybody to the Joint Israeli Probability Seminar. Uh, today we're very happy to have uh, Christina Toninelli from uh, Suramade to tell us about the Fredrickson Anderson two spin facilitated model sharp threshold. Thank you, Christina, for joining us. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Thanks, Ron, for the invitation. I'm very happy to be there virtually. <laughs> So I'm going to present uh, um, a work that is a joint work with uh, Ivaldo Artaski, who just finished PhD with me in Paris and Fabio Martinelli in uh, Rome. And the work concerned the study of uh, the Fredrickson Anderson to spin facilitated model, which is an interacting particle system, which has been introduced in the eighties by physicists to study the liquid glass transition. So let's go up. Oh, no, no, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> okay, so let me start by introducing the model. So uh, it's a model that lives on the um, Euclidean lattice and uh, on each side of the lattice, uh, there is either one particle or the site is empty. This is the configuration space and we will be in dimension two or higher. So I will denote by zero empty sites and one occupied sites. And the dynamics is a continuous time Markov process uh, of um, a non-conservative one in which the elementary moves are birth and death of particles. So more precisely, we fix a parameter Q, which is in the interval zero one. Q will correspond to the equilibrium density of uh, empty sites. And then on each side of the lattice, there is an exponential clock of mean time one clocks on different sites are independent. And when the clock rings on a given site, that site gets a proposal to be updated. And uh, uh, I say a proposal, so I do not uh, immediately update the site. So first of all, sorry, uh, the proposal to be updated is uh, a proposal which is uh, uh, to be updated to empty at rate Q and occupied at rate one minus Q. And um, the, the site accepts this proposal, so updates its uh, actual configuration, if and only if uh, and in the current configuration, it has at least two empty nearest neighbors. So let me, oops, yes. So here a drawing in a two dimension. See here, I have uh, uh, encircled in red a site uh, which has, uh, which, which does not have uh, uh, two empty nearest neighbors. So if the clock rings on that site, the update does not occur. If instead the clock rings on the site which has the green uh, square around, uh, this site has uh, two empty neighbors. So the update on that site occurs, okay? So uh, usually we say that uh, the constraint is satisfied uh, if uh, um, uh, when, the, when the clock rings, we have at least two empty nearest neighbors. So this is the way I will say. Okay, so it's a very uh, simple dynamics and which are the properties of these uh, dynamics, some key properties. So first of all, a very nice property, you can uh, check easily that this dynamics is uh, satisfies the tailored balance with respect to a measure which is a very simple uh, measure, which is the product measure, which gives weight Q to empty sites and one minus Q to empty sites. Uh, sorry, which gives weight Q to empty sites and one minus Q to occupied sites. So this is a reversible invariant measure. So it's an equilibrium measure. And this is because uh, you see that uh, um, when the, the constraint is satisfied, uh, the configuration uh, to which I update the site um, it, uh, it's completely independent with this, uh, the previous state of the site and actually also independent of what was around. The constraint it, uh, depends only on the nearest neighbors. It does not uh, look at the site on which I want to perform the update. So the constraint is the same um, uh, independently of the state of the site that is going to be updated. So the dynamics is reversible because I'm, uh, and it's reversible with respect to this measure, which uh, gives way Q to empty sites because I'm updating, I'm proposing to go to empty at rate Q and I'm proposing to go to occupied at rate min one minus Q. So a very simple um, non-interacting uh, um, equilibrium measure. So if you want to write it in terms of uh, 
an Hamiltonian is just uh, um, an Hamiltonian which is not interactive, so just some of the of the um, uh, occupation variables. And then a second feature of this dynamics, which is less nice in terms of analyzing the dynamics, is that this dynamics is not attractive. So what do I mean by that? Oops, again, sorry for that. Um, what do I mean by, by non-attractive? It means that uh, um, if I have a configuration, an initial configuration of um, empty particle, empty sites and occupied sites, and then I inject more empty sites, I construct a second configuration in which I inject more empty sites, it is not possible now to follow the evolution of these two configurations in a coupled way, so to conserve the um, monotonicity, uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the, the order among these two configurations. So it's not possible to start from a configuration which is uh, um, um, uh, lower than the other one in the sense that it has more empty sites whenever one of the two has an, an empty site, whenever uh, the, the one which is uh, higher has a, an empty site, also the lower one has an empty site and um, uh, preserve this uh, uh, coupling at later times. And this is because you see that if I inject more empty sites, it means that more sites have the constraint which is satisfied. But having the constraint satisfied, it means in, um, that I can update more sites, but I can update them to empty or to occupied. So injecting more vacancies has unpredictable consequences. It doesn't mean that later on I will have more vacancies, okay? And so in particular, from a more technical uh, point of view, this means that uh, all types of arguments of the coupling time are not uh, efficient for, uh, to study these dynamics. And also uh, some uh, very powerful tools that are used to study attractive dynamics uh, of uh, Bert and their types, for example, the stochastic uh, Ising model, cannot be applied here. So for example, uh, types of argument which are uh, sensory arguments, uh, so uh, strategies um, in which uh, in order to say something for the uh, dynamics, I freeze uh, um, a part of the system to a certain, uh, let's say, a worst boundary condition, and I follow just the evolution on a, a portion of the system, and then I infer conclusions on the evolution of the whole system here, cannot be used. Because freezing the configuration to something, either to completely filled or to completely occupied, has unpredictable consequences. It's not something that I can um, um, I can, uh, it's not something that uh, can give a, an information on the actual dynamics. Okay, then another property. For these dynamics, there exist configurations that are blocked. So, and also, so there exist configuration which do not evolve under the dynamics. And also there exist configuration that do evolve under the dynamics, but contain a subset of sites that cannot evolve. I just uh, made a, a drawing, just a second after breakfast. So I, I gave, uh, on the left you have uh, uh, for two dimension, if you, um, if you imagine of expanding this uh, uh, figure up to infinity and just having uh, occupied sites outside, this is a blocked configuration because you see here, um, uh, there are some vacancies, but they are sparse enough in order that none of the site has the constraint satisfied. So if I start from that configuration, the dynamics do not, uh, um, uh, under the dynamics, this configuration does not evolve. And on the right, instead, I, I drew a configuration on which some of the sites have the constraint which is satisfied. In particular, I would say that the, all the empty sites have the, all the sites outside the, the, the red uh, region have the constraint which is already satisfied by, by the sites uh, uh, that are inside this uh, finite portion of the volume that I depicted. But if you imagine to continue this configuration up to infinity, continuing this double uh, column to, to be occupied and to, uh, until the infinity or just uh, making a sort of a periodic boundary condition, this cluster con constituted by this double column, which is completely filled, will be blocked under the dynamics because each side of this uh, uh, double column has uh, three occupied neighbors at least, and so it does not have the constraint satisfied. So it's possible to have configuration which are completely blocked. It's also possible to have configuration which contains a subset which is blocked. So which is a consequence of this fact? The consequence is that uh, um, for sure, the uh, Bernoulli product measure is not the unique invariant measure. There are several invariant measures. In particular, 
each measure which is concentrated on a blockhead configuration is also invariant. And there will be some uh, um, ergodicity, ergodicity issues. So for sure, when I have a configuration which contains a certain blockhead cluster and another configuration which contains another blockhead cluster, these two configurations are not in the same ergodic component. Another consequence is that for sure, relaxation to the uh, reversible product measure cannot be uniform on all the initial conditions. So if I start with a configuration which is blocked, it does not evolve to this uh, um, product measure. So we cannot do, uh, in order to analyze the uh, non relaxation starting from, a non, from outside the, the equilibrium, we cannot do a worst case analysis that would be rough. And I was want also to, to say a more a little bit more technical thing is that uh, uh, a classic tool to study relaxation to equilibrium, which goes through the use of uh, uh, log Sobolev constant and through the use of hyper uh, hyper, um, hyper contractivity properties, do not um, cannot be applied here. And this is because due to the fact that there exist these blocked uh, clusters uh, when we are in infinite volume. Uh, the log Sobolev constant and any type of modified log Sobolev constant diverge with the volume. And now a less technical uh, feature, which is very easy to understand, is that uh, the dynamics of this model is cooperative. What do I mean by that? By that I mean that uh, if I uh, consider any finite um, um, set of uh, empty sites, the sites that uh, facilitate motion, well, no matter how big this finite em uh, uh, empty region is, and no matter how its, uh, its shape uh, is, uh, uh, is given, I won't be able, I will not be able, starting from that finite region, to, um, to, reach, uh, to, to reach with the, the empty sites any part of my, uh, of my uh, volume. In fact, if you start from a finite empty region and you consider, see here in my drawing, a larger empty region, which is a rectangular one, which contains this uh, initial empty cluster, you will see that if outside I don't have any other empty site, this empty region is uh, blocked in the sense that um, I cannot uh, use these empty sites to facilitate the motion outside. You see here, um, inside the empty region, I can do some, uh, I have some constraints which are satisfied so I can perform the moves, but outside, um, outside this rectangular region, if everything is occupied, I, I have the constraints which are not satisfied. So due to this fact, this fact will be a very uh, key ingredient because uh, uh, when we are in the regime of uh, low density or low equilibrium density of empty sites, which is the interesting regime for this model, which I will tell you in a second why, the relaxation mechanism, the, the typical um, events which will trigger relaxation, which will trigger the, the fact that uh, in, the, in the whole volume we will be able to, to perform move, it's very subtle. It does not correspond to a sort of uh, a motion of um, uh, finite empty regions, sort of uh, uh, renormalized motion of, uh, of uh, droplets that move around the, the system, but it will be something more, uh, uh, um, more subtle. Okay, so this was just to, to say that uh, uh, showing you these properties was to motivate the fact that studying this uh, uh, model due to the fact that there are these uh, um, hard constraints, um, uh, several of the tools that are usually used to study uh, interacting particle system with, which have a, um, a non-conservative dynamics, so a, a Glauber type dynamics fail here. So we need to introduce some different tools. So now before um, uh, presenting the results, I want to give you some motivation behind the study of this model, because I told you in the beginning that uh, this model was introduced by, um, by physicists. It was introduced by two physicists, Fredrickson and Anderson in the, in the 80s. And their, um, their goal was to introduce a model that could, uh, a, a toy model to study the liquid gas transition. So uh, let me tell you a few words on what is the liquid gas transition. So it's the following phenomenon. So if you take a liquid mixture of uh, say silica, 
and uh, so uh, which is um, coming from the, the sand of our beaches and uh, some impurities given by uh, usually sodium carbonates or other types of impurity and you take this uh, um, um, high temp uh, this, uh, this mixtures at high temperature where it is liquid and then you immediately uh, quench very rapidly quench the temperature to a, a lower temperature um, if you do this uh, um, cooling fast enough uh, and you go through the melting temperature at which the uh, liquid crystal transition should occur, but this um, crystallization does not occur due to the fact that you are uh, cooling down very fast. And when you cool very fast and not adiabatically in this, uh, in this liquid, uh, um, let's say the, the order of crystal structure, does not have time to enucleate also due to the presence of the impurities. And when you lower the temperature, the state remains, uh, the state of the system instead of uh, uh, ordering remains liquid and disordered. But when lowering the temperature, uh, this liquid, which is no more stable, but is entered into a metastable phase because it's in a, it's in a uh, regime, temperature regime in which the liquid should turn into an ordered um, solid structure and instead it remains liquid. So it's called the status of uh, super cool liquids is a uh, non equilibrium uh, thermodynamically. It's not stable, the liquid in that structure, but uh, uh, in the experiment, uh, since we don't have time to enucleate the crystal, it remains liquid. And when you lower the temperature, the uh, time scale raise. So as you lower the temperature, the motion of the liquids becomes slower and slower. Essentially, you may see that the liquid becomes a very thick syrup. And at a certain moment, when you lower low, low enough the temperature, uh, the liquid gets stuck. It gets stuck in a solid state, which is the glass state, which is solid from the point of view of, uh, of, um, of uh, the, the solicitation that you can make, uh, the, the stress that you can make on it is a, is a solid structure. But if you look at the structure with the, your microscope, it's like looking at a photo of a liquid. So it's a, a, an amorphous solid. Its structure is disordered as much as the structure of a liquid. And understanding this uh, a transition from a, from a liquid to a solid but disordered structure is still a major open problem in condensed matter physics. Understanding, do we have been uh, manufacturing liquids for 2000 years? Understanding theoretically this transition is, a, is an open problem and understanding the whole phenomenology which goes uh, together with this uh, transition. And in particular, the, the, the heart of this problem is the fact that we are not in front of a, a, of a standard um, uh, phase transition. So at, at, on the one hand, we have very sharply diverging time scales. When we, um, we lower the temperature of one degree, uh, usually we see in the, in, uh, below the melting temperature an increase of time scales, which can be even of the order of 14 orders of magnitude, so 10 to the 14, when we just lower the temperature of one degree. And at the same time, we, we have this sharp divergence of time scale, but this is not motivated by the fact that we are growing some, uh, um, uh, some correlation. So there is not a significant structural change in the, liquid, in, the, in the liquid when we turn into a glass, which would uh, justify this divergence of time scales. Okay, so the, the, the physicists in the 80s were still struggling to find, uh, and they are still uh, today not, uh, uh, they, there is not a consensus around the B theory of liquid gas transition. And so some physicists tried to find some toy models to, to explain this phenomenon, some toy models which would only contain dynamic effects. So the, the ideas of these two physicists, and then the, it was uh, um, followed by, by many other uh, people that uh, introduced different models. The idea was that uh, one key ingredient that justifies this lowering down of time scales would be the fact that uh, when we are at low temperature, so at high density, when we look at the motion of the molecules inside the liquid, this motion could be hindered, could be um, prohibited by the fact that the molecules have too many neighbors. So at high temperature, at, at low temperature, sorry, so high... yes, there is a question. Christina, I'm sorry, yes, yeah. uh, there's something, uh, I don't know if it's just me or in the last sentences, there was a break in the talk. Uh, is it just me or others as well? Um, it's cutting off. Uh, sorry. Yeah, it, the, so I don't, but somehow uh, something, um, the quality was a bit lowered. If something changed, maybe, maybe changed. 
Okay, so actually I didn't change anything. So, uh, so you so you couldn't hear me uh, for a while, but now you. I, hear I, I me? could hear you, but it breaks me. I see somebody else uh, was fine. Okay, so please continue. So, okay, no, I, I didn't get the the, the, oh, the answer right. from the other people, so I don't know if uh, it was for everybody, or if I should go back or. Okay, so please interrupt yeah. me if uh, if you see that it's not. Uh, if not going well, I try to, to change the the um, the Wi-Fi connection. Okay, so I try to to go on, and you tell me if there is a problem. So what I was saying is that uh, uh, the the idea was that uh, um, uh, perhaps this uh, divergence of time scales is due to the fact that uh, um, molecules, when we are at low temperature, so at high density are surrounded by too many neighbors and they cannot move until these neighbors move apart. And perhaps these neighbors as also to wait that their neighbors move apart and so on and so forth. So you see that there is a sort of a local geometric constraint but which could induce a sort of a, um, percolating blocked structure in the, in the liquid which would, uh, be, which would be amorphous, a sort of percolating structure of, uh, of blocked regions that would justify the fact that when lowering the temperature, the liquids uh, has an increasingly uh, long uh, uh, time scales. So the ideas was, so you see why they introduced these uh, uh, constraints, these local constraints, with the idea that introducing that some local constraint could induce a, a sort of cooperative uh, um, blocking of the dynamics. And later on, uh, immediately later, uh, of course, the physicists tried to change the, the and see what happens if one changes the um, the, um, the choice of the constraints, why taking just two empty neighbors, one could take some local different constraints and they investigated the different behavior that uh, um, arises when we have different types of constraints. And, um, and immediately from numerical simulations, they saw that uh, um, despite the simplicity of this model, by choosing properly the constraint that there is, um, they could recover uh, a lot of the real glassy dynamics. So they could re recover sharp diverging time scales, which resemble very much to those that they see experimentally, some aging phenomena, the fact that the motion of the, of the, of the um, liquid is very heterogeneous with some regions relaxing much faster than the other and so on and so forth. So they continued uh, to, to, to study these models. And uh, so now today I want to uh, address the, the first question that the, the first key questions that the physicist has directed for this model. The first question is uh, how do time scale uh, diverge? How do they increase for these uh, um, uh, toy models when uh, the density of empty sites goes to zero, which corresponds to the regime of temperature going to zero? So, high density of uh, blocking particles. So they, uh, I want also to say that uh, um, they, they, this, this question was studied very massively through numerical simulations, uh, but it's, uh, it should be said that uh, um, due to the fact that uh, they, they devised some constraints that uh, try to mimic the real glassy dynamics, and so they are constraints that induce very sharply divergent time scales, analyzing, having clear cut answers from numerics or even having the right conjectures is very delicate. So in fact, it turns out that many of the conjectures that were put forward by physicists for these models with kinetic constraints uh, using numerical simulation turned out to be not correct. Okay, so we will try to analyze this question, try to, to, um, to pin down the typical time scales for this model when the density of empty sites goes to zero. And to do that, I first have to tell you something about a related uh, dynamics, which is a non-stochastic dynamics, uh, which you might know for other reasons. It is a, uh, a deterministic discrete time dynamics, which is called two neighbor bootstrap percolation. It's a dynamics which lives on the same configuration space, so we are on ZD, on each side we have empty, or each side is either empty or occupied. And now the dynamics is the deterministic and discrete times, and it goes as follows. You start from an initial configuration, and then uh, you, uh, in parallel, you look at each, bar, at each site, and uh, if the site is uh, uh, empty um, at time zero, you leave it empty at time one. If instead the site is occupied by one particle, you check whether the particle has at least two empty neighbors. 
if it's the case, then you empty the site, you kill the particle. So you have then reached the configuration at time one, and then you iterate the same uh, uh, procedure to reach configuration at later time. So you see, you have a deterministic algorithm now in which, uh, which is monotone. Sites are never filled, so empty sites uh, remain always empty, and occupied sites are emptied um, as soon as the same constraint as for the two uh, for our FA to F model for the free and this dynamics is satisfied. So the constraint that we have at least two empty neighbors. So now for this uh, um, uh, deterministic dynamics, what happens is that if I wait, uh, uh, if I iterate the dynamics uh, at a certain moment, I will reach a stable configuration, which can be either a completely empty configuration if everything is empty then the configuration stays empty, or it's a configuration in which I have empty sites and I have some uh, um, backbones of particles that are mutually blocked by the, by the dynamics. For example, uh, if you remember the figure that I made before, if I, um, I, can, I could reach a configuration in which I have a double column, an infinite double column, which is occupied and the rest is empty. In that case, uh, I cannot evolve anymore under the bootstrap dynamics. Okay, so now this uh, um, bootstrap uh, deterministic dynamics has been very much studied. And the first question that has been investigated is what happens typically if I start from an initial configuration which is distributed with a Bernoulli measure? So if I start from an initial configuration in which each site is empty and uh, independently empty and occupied, empty with probability Q and occupied with probability one minus Q, what happens? Do I reach at the end, a stable configuration which is empty, or do I have a, a, a backbone of sites which is blocked under this uh, dynamics on which I will, which I will um, discover, which I will we stay until uh, for, forever? And the answer uh, for this model was given uh, at the end of the 80s by Arnold Van Enter. And the answer is that no matter um, which is the choice of the initial density of occupied of empty sites, no matter how small it is almost surely the stable configuration is empty. So uh, the probability to find a, a, an occupied uh, backbone of particles, which is forever blocked under the dynamics is zero. So we, these blocked clusters do not percolate for the, for the bootstrap dynamics. And so the next question is, uh, what happens when uh, the, this uh, initial density of uh, empty sites goes to zero, which is the typical times time that I have to wait if I'm sitting on a site in order to be emptied for the first time. Say I'm sitting at the origin and I would like to know how long I do have to wait in order to be first emptied by the dynamics. So I know that I will be emptied because at the end uh, I, will, uh, I will go to the completely empty configuration, but how long I have to wait. And this problem was, for in, uh, was first studied in, uh, for, uh, in, in two dimension by Eisenman and Leibovitz, which, uh, um, who, who uh, showed that uh, upper and lower bounds for this uh, first time to be emptied, which showed that uh, this time, um, which is called usually the infection time for the bootstrap model, scales exponentially with one over, uh, with a constant over Q in, uh, in two dimension. And later there was a, a, a breakthrough by Alexander O'Royd in 2008 who showed that uh, there is a sharp threshold. So he identified, the, so he showed that this infection time scales as, as, a, as an exponential with a precise constant pi square over 18 in two dimension over Q. And later on, uh, Balov, Polobas, Dominic Copan and Morris showed that uh, actually in any dimension there is a sharp threshold and the, so they identify the, the constant in the exponent, in the exponential, and uh, in, in a higher dimension, the exponential is not exponential of, of an inverse of the density of uh, empty sites, but inverse of the density to the power one over d minus one. And we see, we will see why this scaling. So this is the result for the um, deterministic dynamics, which you see uh, it's, um, it's related to our stochastic dynamics because the constraints are the same, but the difference is that our, not only the fact that our dynamics is stochastic, but it, our dynamics is not monotone. We can empty the sites, but we can also fill them. So it's a, it's a different dynamics. But the, but the point is that uh, what is, uh, so the, the and, and in a direct link among the two dynamics is that uh, 
all the it's easy to see that all the clusters which are blocked under the stochastic dynamics coincides with blocked clusters for the booster dynamics. So more precisely, if I start from uh, if I give an initial configuration and I I perform on that the, the booster percolation algorithm, so the deterministic algorithm, and I, I end, at the end I have a configuration which is completely empty, so I don't have uh, blocked clusters under the deterministic dynamics. Then for the same initial configuration, I also don't have uh, blocked clusters under the stochastic dynamics. So we have a one-to-one -one correspondence for uh, clusters which are blocked under the booster percolation and under the stochastic dynamics. But that's the um, that's the that's all for the link among the two dynamics because uh, the the two dynamics are are very different uh, besides this uh, link uh, connecting the the, the blocked clusters. So now, which is the result for the stochastic dynamics or the results I want to to, to explain is that uh, um, when we are uh, when we the density of empty sites goes to zero, the equilibrium density of empty sites goes to zero. And we consider the uh, stochastic dynamics, the stochastic process starting initially from the um, Bernoulli measure with density of vacancy Q. Then um, with high probability, if I look at the random time and the random first time at which the origin is uh, emptied, again, this random first time, so as for the boots of, as for the deterministic dynamics, this case exponentially, with a, a sharp constant divided by the density of empty size to the power one over d minus one, as for the bootstrap, uh, with the difference that the sharp constant that we find is uh, d times the uh, sharp constant for the bootstrap, where d is the um, spatial dimension. And the same result also holds for the mean uh, over, the, um, over the stationary process of this uh, uh, first time at which the origin is emptied. So with high probability, the infection time for the stochastic dynamics is the dth power of the infection time for the uh, deterministic dynamics. So I will give you the heuristics of uh, behind this result and also uh, if I have time, a couple of ideas on the, on the, on the proof strategy. But I want to say a um, couple of remarks from, from the start. So first of all, uh, as, as I said, the two dynamics are very different. So this result is not at all a corollary of the bootstrap percolation result. So bootstrap percolation is very useful to establish. Uh, so of course, to establish the result, we, we have uh, we establish upper and lower bounds, which, uh, which match. To establish the lower bound, essentially, it's, um, it's almost for free using the bootstrap result. Uh, because uh, um, the, the, the bootstrap dynamics essentially does as much as, uh, as, as we can to, to reach the origin because the dynamics, uh, the, the deterministic dynamics only empty site. So in a sense, it will go uh, faster than, uh, uh, than the stochastic dynamics, which also fills back the sites. But to establish the upper bound, we have to use very different techniques because these, uh, we have this uh, empty and occupying mechanism uh, for the stochastic dynamics, which has no counterpart in the, in the deterministic dynamics. And the second thing that I wanted to say is that uh, is related to this uh, remark that I made just before on the fact that uh, numerical simulation are not very easy to interpret. The results of numerical simulation are not very easy to interpret. Is the fact that uh, our result settles some contrasting conjecture that were uh, accumulated in physics literature since uh, the introduction of this model. But initially, starting from numerical simulation, physicists conjecture that uh, the scaling of these uh, infection times should be faster than exponential, uh, faster than an exponential with the power of uh, uh, the inverse density. Then later, uh, it was given a heuristic that uh, pointed to the fact that the scaling should be exponential. But there were a uh, contrasting conjecture on the value of the sharp constant coming from different heuristics on the type of uh, uh, dominating uh, um, mechanism for uh, when uh, the density of empty size goes to zero. And so, okay, so this, um, um, this result uh, okay, proves one of the conjecture and, uh, and this proves the, the other ones. Okay, so let me give you some. Um, heuristic idea on uh, behind this result. So the first point is that uh, in the 
in the um, low density of empty site regime, uh, you should think that uh, the, um, the motion inside the, the, the model is, uh, is, um, is driven is, um, uh, by, the, by the motion of some large regions, which I will call droplets, which have a very, um, very high concentration of empty sites. So a very, um, the, these regions will be very rare because having a high concentration of empty site at the uh, low value of Q is very unlikely. And so these, uh, uh, these droplets, in fact, uh, they will have a, a density which scales as the inverse of the um, scaling of the uh, infection time that we, we will find at the end, so which, case, uh, which is suppressed exponentially. And they will be largest droplet. They will have a, a, a size which scales uh, as, a, a poly, as an inverse polynomial of the density of empty sites. And these large regions, larger regions, these droplets will be able to move in any direction in our volume and so uh, trigger the, the relaxation. So now I wrote here that these droplets move in any direction, but you could say that, uh, okay, just a second ago, I told you that the dynamics is cooperative and no matter how big uh, I, I, I have, I, no matter how big and how an, a region of empty site is, it's not able to, um, to empty region, any other regions outside, to reach any other position in the, in the volume. So I should explain myself a little bit more. And this is, I'll, di I'll do this through a drawing. So just a, a few minutes ago, we saw that if you have a, a rectangle, which is completely empty and outside everything is occupied, I, I have no, no chance of doing something else, of being able to empty any other site. But look here, I added a, another empty site here in green, just on the, on the right border outside my initial rectangle of empty site. And um, it's easy to see that having just an empty site uh, um, near but outside enables me to empty a whole column here of, uh, of sites uh, to, the, to the right, because I can start from uh, a field site, which is near this additional empty site, and it has also an empty site inside due to this rectangular region, I can empty it. And sequentially, I can empty any site of this column. So having an additional empty site outside enables me to empty a whole uh, um, column to the right. And uh, uh, by reversibility, in the same way, I could fill uh, the, the column just to the, the left here, the first column of my original uh, uh, empty region, by leaving just one single empty site in it. So what I'm saying is that it's true that a finite region is not uh, of empty site, it's not able to uh, induce the um, emptying anything outside, but if I have a single additional empty site outside, I can effectively move this region around. So the point is that I'm choosing these uh, empty, uh, these uh, droplets to be sufficiently large, in particular with a, with a size which, is, uh, which uh, diverges polynomially when the density of empty size goes to zero, in order that typically, in a typical environment, I will be able to find the, the few additional empty sites which allows my regions to move. So these uh, droplets which will be regions that are able to move in any direction in a typical environment. Okay, so now, the, the, so then if you believe me that uh, um, uh, when Q goes to zero, the motion is, uh, um, I, I could find some droplets which dominate the, relax, the, the relaxation, then uh, which are the dominant, uh, um, mechanism, uh, then the, the first time at which the, to, um, to find the first time at which the origin is emptied, I will have to find the first, the, how long it takes for the nearest droplet to arrive near the origin. So what we will have to do is to try to uh, find out how do this uh, droplet move. And we will discover that uh, um, this uh, uh, large red region move as a coalescing and branching simple exclusion process. So there's the droplets in the scale of the droplet, on the scale of the droplets, you have to imagine these regions that can uh, coalesce. So I have a droplet and it can create another droplet nearby. 
they, uh, sorry, uh, they can branch so they can create an, a, a droplet nearby. They can coalesce. So if I find two droplets nearby, uh, they can, uh, one of them can disappear. And they can also uh, move, just I have a droplet in a, in a certain position, it can, uh, it can move to a nearby position. We see it more in, in more detail. But um, due to the fact that uh, I have this coalescing and branching uh, and, uh, and swapping of the position, uh, uh, the time scale that uh, this droplet uh, um, take in order to, to reach the origin, we see as, a, as, the, um, uh, as the inverse of the density of the droplets. Instead, and this is for the stochastic dynamics, instead for the deterministic dynamics, um, the, the motion is, so, so for the boot sub dynamics, um, the motion is a sort of uh, uh, linear propagation. So the, the, the typical, um, the, the expansion of the regions of zeros under the deterministic dynamics starts from the, from the same type of uh, structure. So is uh, dominated by the same type of droplets. But here, uh, in order to reach the origin, I have to, uh, in order to, to reach the origin, I will have to wait a, a time which is, um, the one over this power of this uh, one over the density of droplets because I just have to um, to look at the uh, to to find out which is the distance from the origin to the nearest droplet which is uh, which case uh, is the inverse density to the power one over d in d dimension and then linearly starting from a droplet I can start to um, empty all the regions around. Um, at each time step and uh, reach the, 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 the origin in a, in a time which is linear in this uh, distance. Okay, so something more on uh, what are these uh, droplets, how they look like. Christina? Uh, yes? Can you say again uh, then uh, why the extra power of D? I understand that the bootstrap percolation, the droplet moves at a linear speed towards the origin. Yes. But what stops the uh, Fredrickson Anderson model? Why? How do you see the power D emerging there? Uh, oh, we see it in, in, in a second, but the power D emerges from the fact that uh, now, um, now these droplets uh, uh, don't move uh, linearly. They they perform. Um, they you have to imagine their motion as being a, a sort of a, a simple exclusion plus a coalescing and plus a branching. And if you, and if you have a, a, a model, oops, sorry again, a, a model which is a, um, a coalescing, branching and simple exclusion in which uh, the, um, the um, entities which makes this uh, coalescing and branching and simple exclusion have a density uh, uh, row and you, have, you are in uh, the dimension, then the scaling is, uh, um, of, uh, of the relaxation time or, 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 or of the first time to, to reach the origins is one over, over row. Okay. So if you were, um, if it was a, a sort of a random walk, you would have a, a one over row to the power two over D. Uh -huh. okay. But it's not, a, it's not a, a um, it's not a, a, a random walk. It's uh, it's worse than that, uh, the scaling. So it's it, so even if it was uh, if you were able just to to perform a, a random walk in which you you create another uh, you from a uh, from a droplet you can move the the, the droplet nearby at uh, at uh, on a time scale one already you wouldn't have the. Uh, uh, you would be slower than uh, than the linear. Um, than the linear motion. Okay. O okay, thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, so, the, the, so the, 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 two key, the two key steps here are to, so first of all, to, in order to, to, to find out the, the, the scaling is to identify the optimal droplets, where here the optimal means that uh, the regions which are, um, which are su sufficiently, um, so you, one has to, um, to make a, a balance between regions that are sufficiently um, likely in order that they are, they are not too far from the, 
from the from the from the origin which i want to to reach and that uh, are also um uh, made they contains enough zero in order that uh, uh, they are able to move around in a typical uh, uh, environment a typical environment in which vacancies are uh, are there at density uh, are present at density q in order uh, to to reach the origin sufficiently fast so we we'll have to to balance between taking uh, droplets that contain a lot of empty sites, but at the same time, um, and not too many empty sites in order for them to be likely, but at the same time, having some empty sites in, 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 uh, um, structured in some way that these regions is able to move. So in particular, uh, we cannot have, I showed you just before, uh, a region of um, which is completely empty and uh, if I take the droplet as being a region which, which is uh, of size, of linear size uh, one over Q, which is completely empty, of course, typically I will find around uh, the, at least one empty site in order to, to move it. Because if I have, a, 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 say, a segment of uh, length one over Q, typically I will find, say, one over Q log one over Q, I will find an empty site which allows me to move. But uh, finding a segment of uh, length one over Q log one over Q means that I have to go from the origin to a distance which will be exponential one over Q log. So I will never be able to reach from that, uh, uh, from that droplet the, the origin in a time scale which is just exponential one over Q to some constant. So I will have to find something which is more a, flex a more flexible structure than just taking some rigid empty region of size one order one over Q. Okay, so what will be the uh, our optimal droplet uh, will be a region which contains uh, just a segment of empty sites of the size uh, on the sides one over square root of Q, which we we'll call the which we we'll call the empty core inside our uh, droplet, and then outside this empty core we will have additional empty sites which are um, uh, distributed in such a way that they allow this core to move inside the droplet, to move inside this uh, region of size poly, uh, poly, um, power of uh, one over Q without creating a larger empty segment. So we want to, to move around this uh, empty core without creating a too long empty uh, segment in order not to go through a, uh, to an energy barrier which requires waiting for times which are more than exponential one over Q. Here, I'm sorry, here I, I forgot to say, I'm looking just at the two dimensional case for simplicity of drawings and, and, and everything. So uh, I made here a, a drawing to, to show how these uh, droplets look like. So they, they are um, defined via a sort of via a multi-scale construction, starting from the from the from the center, so we have uh, somewhere. Um, so, so, so if you look at this drawing, we have this uh, uh, exponentially increasing uh, uh, scale inside the the, um, the droplet. The droplet is uh, on scale uh, on the scale L droplet, which is uh, an inverse of power Q. And inside this droplet, we have uh, a, a region, this black uh, square for me which contains, uh, uh, which is on scale one over square root of Q, which contains one row, which is completely empty. And then in the rest of this rectangle, I require that there are not two consecutive rows that are completely occupied. So I require that each two rows, I have at least one empty side. And if it, that is the case uh, for the same mechanism that I showed before, the fact that uh, having one empty sites around allows me to, to move, in fact, I, I need to have one empty site, not just near, but either near or in the next row. Then I will be able inside this square, uh, black square to move this empty row around. And then the other requirements around are that uh, on this uh, increasing uh, uh, sequence of uh, rectangles, um, on each uh, rectangle, I have the requirement that uh, if the rectangle contains a, a horizontal red uh, arrow, I have the requirement that I do not have two consecutive uh, um, uh, full uh, columns. And if I have a vertical arrow, I require that I do not have two consecutive empty uh, full uh, rows. 
So if this requirement is satisfied, you can show that uh, this uh, internal um, core of uh, this uh, one over square root two uh, empty uh, row can be moved all around on this uh, droplet without creating a, an empty uh, segment which is longer than that. Okay, let me jump the precise definition. And um, then uh, using this, uh, uh, so actually we don't use uh, uh, in our arguments, we never use uh, um, writing down the, the path that is uh, uh, the canonical path uh, that uh, this uh, uh, internal empty region has to perform to, to, to move around. But the, um, nevertheless, nevertheless is like, like if we were able to follow this uh, um, empty core and make it move all around. And uh, using this, uh, this mechanism, we can show that uh, if uh, we have uh, this uh, droplet somewhere, and uh, another droplet uh, nearby, we can make them uh, coalesce uh, in a time which is, uh, um, a, uh, which is uh, exponential over Q to the power one over um, in two dimension, uh, one over square root of uh, Q. What do I mean by coalescing to droplet? It means that uh, uh, if I have uh, um, a droplet somewhere, and nearby I have a region which is typical in the sense that I require just having one empty site uh, per row and per column, this time on the rows and columns which are of the size of the droplet, so one over Q to a certain power, which is very likely. Uh, if I have these uh, two, sorry, if I have these two uh, droplets nearby, I can um, reach on this time scale a configuration in which I have a droplet just in one of the two regions and on the other one, I just have some typical configuration in which I have just one empty site per, uh, per row and per column of size uh, uh, one over uh, Q to, to, the, to the proper power. Then um, I have these two other uh, things that a droplet can make. If I have a droplet somewhere and in the nearby region, I do have just uh, one uh, empty site per row and per column. I can move this empty core from inside the, the original droplet inside the, the, the second region and adjust all these uh, empty sites, which are uh, some um, um, in, the, in, the second, uh, in the second region in order to create all this, uh, um, all this dust of uh, empty sites around the core in order that also the second region is, becomes a droplet. And this requires a time which is uh, um, which is uh, the, um, the typical time to create this uh, new droplet is the inverse density of the droplet itself. And the, and the third type of moves of the, uh, that this droplet can make is that uh, if I have a, a droplet somewhere and I have uh, nearby a region which is again, uh, has nothing uh, special, it's just the one typical region in which I have just one empty site per one per column, I can, uh, um, I can move the, the core inside the droplet and then bring it to the boundary of the droplet and uh, moving it inside the second region and adjusting the, uh, the empty site inside in order that now I have a, a sort of deformed the original droplet and move it in the, into the second region, but in a time scale, which now is not the time scale to create uh, a new droplet, but it's just the time scale, which is exponential of uh, square root of uh, Q. So you have to think of this droplet as some, uh, since this uh, time scale is much smaller than the time scale to create a new droplet, you have to think of them, that's what I was saying at the beginning, as some regions that uh, um, they coalesce in a time scale order one, because this is, uh, um, uh, this is much smaller than uh, the inverse density when Q goes to zero, and which can swap their position in time scale order one, and instead to create a, a new region, they require a time scale which is one over rho. So you see that this is uh, much slower than uh, a, a, a random walk because uh, in order to move, uh, um, so so no, it's uh, it's like uh, um, it's like a, it's like a, a, a random walk in which you, you move on one step in order one, but then the um, you you have to you have to um, when you want to to relax you have to create also a whole new 
um, new density of uh, empty sites. And uh, this is why this, um, it's not like um, it's not like a single random walk that is moving, but you have this density of empty sites all around that you have to recreate and to bring the to to wait for the time to to reach the the, the origin will require a time which is one over rho d. So this is okay. This is what uh, I call uh, a generalized coalescing and branching simple exclusion because it's a simple exclusion in which the the uh, the, the entities, let's say, that make this uh, simple exclusion are some of uh, these uh, structured regions, these, uh, these droplets. So now, uh, in order to, um, um, to find the, um, to, to find the, the, the result on the, on the infection time, what we, what we do uh, practically is that we, um, we relate, uh, so the, this uh, first time at which we, we um, empty the origin is a heating time. So it's the heating time of the event, the origin is empty. And as usual, man can make a connection from of this heating time with the uh, eigenvalues of the uh, Dirichlet form for these dynamics. And then um, what we do is to renormalize this, uh, the, um, this, um, uh, the, the study of these directly even values on the droplet size and to uh, establish then, so the infection time is uh, upper bounded by the relaxation time. So the inverse of the spectral gap of the, of the dynamics. And then uh, we, in, on this, for this uh, inverse of the spectral gap, uh, we establish uh, um, so for, um, a, um, an inequality, which is uh, which goes into two steps. So first of all, through the renormalization on the droplet size, uh, we make uh, appear a, a relaxation time for the coalescing and branching simple exclusion process. And then um, the the second uh, uh, factor is a relaxation time inside the droplets. So this is the relaxation time of the stochastic dynamics in a region that contains a droplet. So then um, the relaxation time of the uh, coalescing and branching simple exclusion process is uh, scales, the dominant part scales as an inverse uh, value of the, of the density of, uh, uh, of droplets. So in order to establish this result, uh, we had to, we studied the, um, we determine the log Sobolev constants of the of this coalescing and branching simple exclusion process, and then from that we determine the, the relaxation time. And uh, on the other hand, to establish this uh, inequality for the relaxation time of the Friedrichson so the FA to F dynamics inside the droplet, uh, we had to use this uh, multi scale construction of the droplets and uh, proceed via a sort of a bisection. Technique. So we didn't use, uh, as I said, uh, path arguments, but you use the sort of uh, bisection technique, which relates the time scale on a certain scale to the time scale on the smaller scale through this uh, bisection. And then putting everything together gives the scaling of the infection time. And uh, I'm now finishing with the last slide in the last minute. And uh, just I wanted to say that, uh, as I said, uh, uh, this uh, fa 2 f model is uh, just but one example of these models of interacting particle system with the kinetically con kinetic constraint that are studied by physicists. There is a whole class of system that have been introduced. And uh, the techniques that we use here to study uh, fa 2 f uh, can be also extended to the, to the other choices of the constraint, though in general, one cannot find the, the sharp constant. Um, Using the same techniques, we, we could uh, prove uh, in uh, for the models in two dimension with any choice of these local constraints some uh, universality results. So depending on the constraint, we can find which is the scaling of the time scale, which is not always exponential. It can be power law or exponential with different uh, powers. And uh, I want also to say that uh, always what happens is that uh, when the density goes to zero in the presence of this constraint, that are the, the motion is uh, dominated by uh, the, the, the motion of some large ray regions, but the motion of this region is not always a motion which can be well described by the coalescing and branching simple exclusion. 
sometimes the emotion is very different. And uh, in particular, what happens is that uh, the infection time of the stochastic dynamics is not always uh, a power of the, of the infection time of the um, deterministic dynamics. Sometimes it's much, um, it's much longer. This comes from the fact that uh, while the deterministic dynamics always, uh, always measure, measures just the, 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 the distance to the nearest droplet, Sometime to, to the motion of this droplet has to go through some uh, energy barriers which, uh, which uh, matter and which, have, which are on the same, um, on the same uh, time scale and, and induce a very different uh, uh, behavior. So for example, if you, instead of having uh, requiring two empty sites among the nearest neighbor, you require two empty sites among the neighbors to the north, to the south and to the west, which is called the Duarte model, which is also very well studied for the bootstrap, the scaling is uh, for the stochastic version is very different. So it scales as a const uh, as a one over Q square, exponential one over Q square modulo log corrections, while for the deterministic dynamics, it scales as exponential one over Q. So it's a very different scaling. It's not just a power of the same scale. Okay, and that's all that I wanted to say. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Christina, for this uh, very delicate and uh, amazing work. Um, does anybody have questions? Yes, there was uh, one phrase on one uh, slide that uh, droplet and non-droplet swap the position uh, in some time. But, but that means that droplet and non-droplet uh, swap, what it means? It means that uh, it was before, like here. Okay, I think it was. Uh, um, yes, it was here. So it means that. Uh, okay, so this 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 droplet is uh, uh, this uh, very unlikely region uh, which contains these um, zeros uh, in a um, with a certain structure. If you look at the at the, at the, at the region of uh, on the on the size of uh, uh, of the of the droplet and so one over q to a certain power and you just uh, take a, a configuration distributed with equilibrium inside, uh, typically there is not a droplet, so in, there is not this structure because having this uh, internal core of size one over square root q and having all these. Uh, uh, traversability condition not to uh, fill the columns nearby, etc. on these rectangles is very unlikely. It requires, it's, it has a probability that scales as uh, exponential minus uh, this uh, constant over square root of Q. So typically what you, uh, but, but now if you impose having somewhere this, uh, this structure and in the, in the nearby region of the same scale, you, you impose nothing, you just take a, a, a typical uh, equilibrium configuration. Then in this second region, you typically will just see a, a one empty site on each column and row because they are column and rows of size uh, inverse of a power of Q. So typically we find just one zeros uh, over, over there. And what I say by swap the position, it means that on a time scale, uh, this big T, I will be able to uh, move the core, this uh, one over square root core inside the, my, my, my first region, my droplet, and move around also this uh, empty site that I have as a, uh, in this original region and move them in the second region in order that now the first region do not have any more the structure to be a droplet, this, uh, this unlike structure, but the second region do have it. So in a sense, you have to think of these droplets as some uh, regions that are able to deform themselves uh, and uh, bring their zeros in, in, a, in a nearby region in order that now the, the unlike, uh, uh, unlikely structure is in the second uh, part, in the, second, uh, in, the, in the volume where it was not in the beginning. And this doesn't require the time scale, typical time scale to, 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 to see uh, this uh, unlikely event with respect to equilibrium measure. So it, it doesn't, doesn't require a time scale one over the density of the droplet. It requires a much smaller time scale because uh, deforming this original region and, and moving the, the zero around requires a, a much smaller time scale. Okay, of course, all this you, you might think, how, how, do, how do we know? So the, the point is that uh, we, 
So you could try to, to, mm, to, to follow, it's not possible, we were not able to follow the motion of this core and uh, uh, find on these trajectories how long it takes. What we do is we consider a region which has the, uh, the size of uh, two uh, droplets, so it's a rectangle which, uh, which has a, a, a horizontally a size two times the length of the droplet and vertically the size of the droplet. And then we look at uh, the um, how long. It, uh, so we look at uh, on the um, on we look at the relaxation time. So at the, at the um, um, in terms of the um, uh, spectral gap of the dynamics of our model or our stochastic model inside this region, imposing that we have a droplet somewhere. And we look at this relaxation time, imposing that we have just one droplet, and we find out that this relaxation time scales as, uh, as this uh, um, exponential one over square root of q, which means that also moving the, the, the region nearby, uh, because this is something, so imposing that we have a, a droplet all the time means that we will be able to reach also configuration which has the droplet in the second position. And this requires a time which is order big T. I don't know if it was clear the answer. Yes, thank you. Yes, okay. Hi, hello, I, I have a question. Um, you mentioned that the uh, blocker uh, of your two model, of your model between the model uh, called the two bootstrap population are the same. Um, I'm wondering if you have more comments on that and I, I'm wondering if, um, because in your theorem, you mentioned that the, uh, the stopping time tall uh, has some property with high probability. I'm wondering if uh, that's okay, random so variable, that the first time is that origin is zero uh, could, you know, take in value as infinity. Like, uh, does you, uh, does so, that make sense? Okay, so, so there is some noise below, so I'm not, uh, so, so I think the first question is if I uh, comments on uh, how, uh, which is the difference of our droplets with respect to those who are used for the bootstrap. That, that was your first question. No, right? my first question yes. is the link about the block the size of the two models. You said, you mentioned that the uh, block the uh, size of the two mm -hmm. models are the same or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wondering the more comments, like the more precise meaning of that. Okay, um, so, so, but that, I wanted to say that, um, um, you see, the constraint is the same um, to perform a move for our dynamics, so for the stochastic dynamics and for the bootstrap. And, and the bootstrap, so, um, if, um, I, I just wanted to say that uh, um, if I have an initial configuration and I want to uh, find out which are the, um, the, um, the clusters of sites which are occupied and that I will never be able during my stochastic dynamics to empty them, okay? These are, uh, this coincide with the with the, those clusters which are occupied and that remain occupied at the end of the um, of the deterministic dynamics because uh, any move that can be made by the deterministic dynamics I can also make it by the stochastic dynamics because all the emptying uh, that I do with the with the deterministic dynamics I can do them with the stochastic dynamics so the, the difference is that uh, which. The, the, the reason why then the, the time scales are very different is that uh, for the stochastic dynamics, I, I cannot just, uh, so tip, if, if, I, if I require to empty sequentially, to empty uh, some big regions, it will be very unlikely. So for, for our dynamics, for the stochastic ones, uh, the time scales are, are, are different because uh, uh, I, I will have to do some emptying and filling procedure not to, to Otherwise, we will we will uh, we will reach some uh, uh, mm, some configuration which are which are very unlikely. But, but for the so for the deterministic dynamics, the deterministic one just empties sequentially; it doesn't have to pay a cost to to okay, empty sites. Can I ask another question? Uh, yes. Your main results. Uh, can you yes. show us your main result again? Yes. 
Yes. Uh, did you prove that, um, like, uh, uh, what, what do you mean? Like when Q goes to zero with high probability, tau zero equals to some approximation expression. Like, uh, I mean, uh, like it's not that precise what, what, is, uh, what does the statement mean? Like, do you mean the O1 is uh, it's, converge it, it, to zero in probability? It, it's more, uh, it's, I mean that the, the uh, the small O1 goes to, it's the small O1 is with respect to Q, so it, uh, it goes to, uh, it goes to zero. Uh, but uh, your O1 is random, right? Tau zero is a random object. And, so uh, th this is, okay, so you, you can, you could think of the, so I can, um, uh, so the same results goes also for the mean uh, over, the, over the process started from the initial uh, measure mu of Q. So now it's not random anymore. Okay, then if but it's not random, problem, you, you don't have... so so, Sorry? Yeah, my question is what the meaning of always high probability? Uh, it's that uh, the, when, when Q goes to zero, the, um, the, uh, the probability of uh, scaling uh, faster than that or lower than that, it goes to zero. Oh, uh, okay, okay. It's the uh, same. It's the same uh, for uh, for the result that they have for the bootstrap dynamics. Actually, they don't study uh, the the mean uh, of the of the infection time. Usually, they just look at the at this random variable and they. And they, they just want to know whether, so what, um, which is the probability of, uh, of deviating from this, uh, from, from this um, scaling when Q goes to zero. So whether, whether we, so it's, it's, it's exactly what, what we, uh, the meaning of our result is exactly in the same, uh, in, the, in the same as for the, um, for the bootstrap results. So, so with high probability, they, uh, we mean uh, with probability which goes to one as Q goes to zero. Uh, can I, can I, can I ask you? Yes. Maybe you may try for any fixed epsilon, the probability that the, that the relaxation time equals uh, that is, uh, this occurs with probability at least one minus epsilon as Q goes to zero. For some non-random little of one, maybe. Um, but that, uh, so you mean? Uh, yeah, it's just a comment. I just don't think this statement is very precise. Uh, just really a comment. But yeah, yes. I'm sure maybe you can make it precise in your paper. Thank you. Just. I'm going to look if we wrote it differently in the paper, but oh. okay. Okay. Um, other question? Yes. Sorry, you you just uh, uh, shown the slide where the value of lambda lambda of d was uh, presented, but. Uh, what is the result? Is lambda of g no, no, is known for every g or only for g equal to 2? No, 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 it's known for every d. It's just that while in d equal to 2, it has a nice expression in uh, larger d. It's an, an integral uh, expression that I, I didn't want to, to show, but they, no, no, it's, it's known for any d. Mm. Ah, it's the you. result of uh, 2012 by these uh, people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you, you mentioned that you prove a uh, universality results on the last uh, slide, but you also said that in some cases the, uh, the time uh, for the origin to empty is no longer exponential, it's uh, power low. So you, you can, uh, in those cases, you, you can determine uh, the power for the, uh, for the kinetically constrained model that's related to the bootstrap population. How does it go with universality? It depends on the on the on the choices of the constraints. And sometimes one can determine it, and sometimes not. So, for example, but what I want to say is that so one case in which it's power law is, for example, the case in which the constraint is just that you need one empty site 
around. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so a very simple case in which uh, uh, in order to, to make the, the, the move, you need one empty site. Uh, yeah. In that case, uh, um, in, two in, in one dimension, the power is three, in two or in, in three or higher dimension, the power is two, and in two is uh, two with the log correction that we cannot, uh, uh, we cannot find. But in general, there, there, is a, there is a whole class. So depending on the, on the choice of the, on the rules, uh, I'm not sure that I, I, I prepared or not. Uh, you know, see very slide, perhaps yes, perhaps not. Yes, so there are, okay, but I, but I didn't wrote what is, uh, so it, in, in, um, there is a whole ch uh, choice of the rules. These are the rules for which you can find the droplet which, has, which is finite now. So the motion is not anymore cooperative, but you can find the proper, properly um, uh, um, defined uh, uh, structure of fi uh, finite of empty sites, which is able to move around on the, on the, on the lattice. And in general, uh, an interesting uh, uh, point that uh, was just proved in the in the Woodrow community is that uh, if you give me a, a, a rule in this class, um, it's not possible in general for a, for a general rule, it's not possible to determine it's, it's undecidable the power. So for some specific rule, one could find the power, but it's not possible to um, to find. Uh, uh, it was related re recently. Uh, very recently to a, to a problem of um, um, uh, a problem of, a, of solving for, for a Turing machine, so which is not uh, decidable. The fact that, uh, uh, but I'm not, I don't want to comment more about that because I have not yet uh, read the paper, oh. uh, but uh, determining, in, there is not, while determining, uh, so, mm, so it's, it's not possible in general to determine this power. Okay, so if you give me a rule, it, there is not a way to determine the, the power. But one point that I perhaps that I wanted to, to make is that in general, even for this model for which uh, there is a, a power for the, for the, for the bootstrap, for, for the stochastic dynamics is not uh, necessarily uh, just having a power, the scaling can be different. Because again, if you think of the model in which you need just one, one empty neighbors. If you now require the neighbor to be in a specific direction, say for example in one dimension, mm -hmm. you require the neighbor just to the right. While for the bootstrap, you just have to wait uh, to 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 go and check for the distance from the origin to the next uh, uh, empty site to the right. For the stochastic model, the motion of this uh, empty site is very different from being just. Uh, a, a random walk or uh, something which can move uh, linearly or with the power. And, uh, and the scaling is uh, already for that uh, very easy case, it's not anymore a power. This is what is called the East model. In that case, you have uh, one over Q to a log. So because this single empty site has to uh, um, go through some uh, logarithmic energy barrier in the distance with the, with the droplet in order to, to reach the origin. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, I... Sorry, and what is uh, written subcritical tau is xi is infinity. What is what is what what is tau xi? No, that that's okay. So, um, that's the case. So you could you could, um, you could uh, write uh, um, so pick a choice of the rule for which rules. Sorry for which uh, uh, below a critical density of empty sites, the uh, blocked clusters percolate. And mm. so below that critical density, uh, the, 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 time, the time scale to, uh, the, the, the mean of the infection time to reach the origin is really infinite. It's, it's very easy. For example, in two dimension, if you require to have your empty, uh, both your neighbor above, and the, to the right, empty, which is what's called the Northeast model. So if you want both of them to be empty uh, below the critical density of uh, oriented percolation in two dimension. So uh, when, when the, when the, uh, when the occupied sites uh, percolate uh, with respect to oriented percolation, then these, these clusters are blocked because uh, when a site, uh, um, so if you have arrows on your uh, two-dimensional uh, lattice, which go to the up and right, then uh, if all these um, uh, 
uh, okay, perhaps I should have drawn on, a, on my virtual background. But anyway, if all these, uh, if you have a cluster of occupied sites, which goes, follows the arrows, uh, which go up and right, this cluster um, is, uh, it, it, this cluster is infinite, it's blocked under the dynamics. So whenever it is, as soon as these uh, clusters percolate, um, you have uh, uh, blocked clusters. So that's a choice of the rules for which uh, this belongs to the whole uh, class in, uh, for which uh, there is a critical density of empty sites below which uh, um, we, we do not, uh, we cannot reach uh, the, the origin in a, in a finite time with probability one. Thank you. 